One of the first things you learn when you're learning to fly is about the production of lift and that the air moving over the top of the wing accelerates compared to the air going underneath the wing. Now you've likely been told that the curved upper surface of the wing is what causes the air over the top of the wing to accelerate because these two air molecules have to meet at the trailing edge and in order to do so, this air flowing over the top of the wing has to travel faster, thus dubbed the equal transit or time theory. Even though this is what's commonly taught by many flight instructors and ground schools, anybody with any common sense can start to question this. Because not all airplanes have wings that are shaped like this. So how do airplanes with symmetrical airfoils like fighters and aerobatic airplanes fly? How does this paper airplane fly? Well, the answer is because the equal transit theory is complete BS. In fact, it's even been disproven by NASA many, many years ago, and I'll include a link to that NASA website down in the description so you can check it out for yourself. The entire reason I'm even making this video is because I was once taught wrong, and I don't want you to fall into that same trap of uh, being a victim of CFI's perpetuating myths. I want to be clear that the purpose of this video is discussing the reason for the air accelerating over the upper surface of the wing and not about the overall production of lift. Because in reality, the production of lift is extremely complex and no one really knows exactly how it's produced. But we do know that the equal transit theory is false. Nearly any object can produce lift and it all has to do with angle of attack. Let's take this eraser for example. If you set it to a zero angle of attack, then the air flowing over the upper and lower surface of this object is at the same speed. However, if we set this eraser to a little bit of an angle to the oncoming wind, where now we have a positive angle of attack, that wind is going to turn more over the top of the wing and accelerate than it will going underneath the wing. And now that we have a positive angle of attack, this object will generate lift. And the more you increase this angle of attack, the more lift it's gonna generate until it exceeds the critical angle of attack, of course. And by the way, if you just use a little common sense, if you take these two molecules of air and the one on top is moving faster than the one on the bottom, how in the world do you expect them to end up at the same place? The answer is it doesn't. In reality, this molecule of air on top is gonna to be somewhere over in here, where the one on the bottom will meet up back here. So the answer to why the air accelerates over the upper surface of the wing is due to turning. So the more the air turns, the more it accelerates, and thus the more lift is generated. This is why you see a lot of airfoils where the upper surface is curved because it's gonna allow the air to turn more. But obviously a symmetrical airfoil can generate lift and an aerobatic airplane that's an inverted flight can generate lift. And it's all because of turning and having a positive angle of attack. The last thing I'm gonna leave you with is this visual to make it just that much easier to understand. We all know that air accelerates over mountain ranges, but why? Well, it's the same principle. It's turning, so it's accelerating. So think of a wing as doing the same thing to the air. So this is my challenge to you with anything in your flight training. If it doesn't make sense on its face, challenge it and ask your instructor to explain why with relevant facts. Because if they can't explain why, then it's probably a load of crap. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, I know you're going to like this one too. Check it out, and I'll see you next time.